guys, Kylo here. It may get loud, I'm standing out here by a road. I'm at the oil change place here. I don't like taking all the parts off the bottom of this truck to change it, so I just pay them to do it. But I had a video that's been sitting on my desktop for many, many months. This was back, uh, oh man, it was last year when it was still cool, like, sorry about the traffic noise again. The reason I'm not posted it is because, is because in the video, I actually, I think that I have the GPS data from the flight and the plan was to edit all that in there so that I could show you the stats as I talked about it and just kind of show you what transpired but the data didn't take I never was able to access the flight track yeah but I'm gonna post the video up with that caveat I, I don't have anything to show you as far as GPS data this is the video I hope you enjoy it it's a fun flight I remember it just like it was yesterday so I'm gonna get back in here and put this thing together for you see you guys later Hey guys, Kylo here. So I had a flight today and I didn't record it. And I thought that I would make a video and talk about some of the things that I learned during this flight. So I did a two mile cross country today. <laughs> I know, I know, exciting distance, right? But it was a super light day. Let, let me just talk you through the entire flight. If you'll bear with me for just a few minutes, I'll give you the setup. So it's a cool day, highs around 60 just under 60 I would say under 60 and especially once you start climbing it's gonna be closer to 50 to where I was at took off with a motor and the Zeno just climbed up maybe 800 feet and I killed the motor and I felt a little thermal but I, I bailed and I went to another place and there was nothing and I got down to a couple hundred feet and I restarted and the motor was still warm this was probably two minutes after I killed it started back up no problemo and I climbed up again and I went to maybe a thousand feet no no i went to about 500 feet and i connected with that next thermal that i was searching for when i went back and i may even have the gps data now that i think about it i think i have the gps data wrong so we can relay that on the screen here and we can i do have evidence after all who would have thought it but i still want to talk about the flight with you okay climb back up connected with a the thermal and i immediately went to idle and I started thermaling and I cracked my little ear, ear cup there. And that's something that came up. One of the learning moments that I had today was my typical paramotor helmet, the helicopter helmet that I usually wear during my videos. Well, it mutes out the sound of the Vario. The ear protection is so good on it that I can't hear the Vario. The Vario is not loud enough, at least the uh, XC Tracer, the one that I was using today for my, my sole source of variometer. Fantastic Vario. They said it was good in light conditions. I just didn't know how good till today. Today, the conditions were super light. Maybe, maybe 150 feet per minute up. We'll look and see just how fast I was climbing. That's my guest talking about it right now. It was pretty light. It was, it was light, but they were held together somewhat well. The thermals that I found did have some consistency to them. The thermal that I connected with, I I climbed from maybe 500 feet up to about 1400 and that was the tippy top. There was just nothing else. I was just sort of bouncing at the top, boop, 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 you know, clipping along. I thought, hell, I'm going for the next one. So I looked at the terrain, I looked at the air and I just, I just made my move. Now, lesson number two was I changed my setup. What I had set up was the XC Tracer Bluetoothing over to my phone, and I used an app. Let's see what the name of this app is. XC Track. I done turned it on now. Let me. I took XC Track, and uh, it was linking over the data from the XC Tracer to the app XC Track on my phone. It's the first time I've ever done anything like this. I read it was possible and I got to looking at some of the settings that were doable on the um, on the XC Tracer and I saw that it was something you could program it to do. Again, this thing's like a little box. It looks like nothing. It looks like a little box with a hole in it, but it's a mini GPS two or three. I can't remember. Pretty neat little tool though. It's very, very sensitive. It couples accelerometers along with a barometer. So it's got a dual, but it, it goes off fast. When you go up, it beeps. 
it beeps every time you go up. So a very nice variometer. But it was the first time I was running this stuff and the map that you got on this thing. Here, I'm just going to open it up for you. And so I'm not used to looking at this map. This is not something that, that I'm accustomed to. And I was trying to figure out what the wind direction was. And it, it was just not, you know, my brain is tuned into my normal flight deck with the Udi, not this thing. I probably just need to mimic what I see on my Udi on this screen. And it may be somewhat doable. But there was no thermal assistant. The wind direction. It, it reads differently so there was a learning curve involved with today's flight and the fact that it was so light and technical i just basically gave up on that i said i'm just going to do it the old school way man i'm going to listen to my thermal i'm going to look at my ground speed and that's it that's my that's what i use right and and based on your altitude wind direction like usually i'm pretty good at reading it but i missed it today I topped out that thermal at about, what, 1,400 feet, whatever the data says. I, I don't know. We'll look and see. I'm thinking maybe 1,350-ish, top of my flight. I'm not staring at the instrument when I'm flying. I'm just up there thermaling around. I'm looking up and around and carrying on. I'm not staring down at what the numbers are. I don't, I don't know what the numbers are. I don't care. I care how many miles I do, but... I do care about where that next thermal's coming from. And once I committed to like, okay, let's go, I sailed... I don't know, it probably threw me a couple of miles. I maybe thermaled a mile and then I glided a mile. And when I started to get low on my glide, I started feeling around for a thermal and I saw a field and I had the wind direction pegged for what it was doing back at the airport. And I thought, this is gonna be perfect. I need to position myself right here for the next thermal. Bam! It was Sink City. And before I sunk out, I thought, I'm going to restart my motor, okay? So I went to restart this, this Moster 185 that I had on. I couldn't get a good stroke on it, and I was getting low. Something that occurred to me after well, I committed to the landing, after I, a couple of strokes, I was like, nah, shit. I'm going to land, and I'm going to restart it on the ground, and then I'm going to take back off. I committed to that well before anything happened. So I committed to a landing. I set myself up in a field where I was kind of out in the open, and I had a good shot into the wind that I thought, was the wind, but when I landed, fucking old buzzard had done caught the thermal that I wanted, maybe 200 feet to the west. I went to the southwest. I thought for sure I was gonna catch this son of a bitch on the southwest side of that field. No, no, it was straight to the west. I saw the old buzzard coring up. I thought you son of a bitch. So my motor was cranked at that point. I started feeling the gust coming in from under that thermal that was breaking off behind me that I was watching him go up in. And I took off and I went over there and I turned in it a few times and, and I said, okay, I'm gonna head back over to the, uh, to the airport. I had a student waiting, had some work to do. So the, the thermals were not strong. It was a weak, weak day. I mean, what I got was good. If I hadn't had a Zeno, I don't even know that it would have been doable. I might could have zeroed out a few times, but I killed the motor and I, I climbed and flew for over 20 minutes with the motor off, maybe close to a half hour. I don't know. We'll, again, we'll look at the data. I say 25 minutes, maybe what the flight lasted. That sounds about right. It was one thermal long. I just loitered in a thermal until I got to the top and then I searched around for another one and then I dirted. I've always wanted to use that term. I heard it earlier in the summer and I've not dirted all summer long. <laughs> so finally, I freaking dirted. <laughs> so I get to use the vocabulary term. I dirted like... Who gets excited about that? I don't know. I, I usually do pretty good at this thing, but I dirted out today. It was just a thing. Sometimes you miss it. You know, we're not the birds. We're not the buzzards. We don't have the ability to flap our way back up into the sky. And obviously I couldn't start that damn motor because I'm just a weak bastard. I don't know. Or maybe because it was cold as a damn witch's titty in a brass bra. That's what my papa used to say. I guess that's cold. I don't know. But anyway, I didn't, I didn't do it. I dirted out. But it was, it was a nice field. I didn't even step in any cow shit. They don't think I even got any on the wing. Did a perfect reverse inflation, turned and burned, got out of there. Climbed out nice on that Zeno with the 185 thrust power. All was well. I climbed back up. I went a little, little short XC to the airport. About halfway to the airport, I connected with a the thermal again. And I started turning. And I climbed for another... 10 minutes, maybe 10 minutes. It was more just a loitering session. I wasn't really climbing. I, I was just loitering. The thermals were dying out. This was a couple hours away from the end of the day, maybe even closer. It was the last few climbable thermals. I mean, 
more or less I was just leveling out and catching zeros at that point. It's still practice. I still was catching some stuff and playing around. Nice flight overall. Actually, I, I did three flights. I landed, talked to the guys that were there, said I'm going to go back up for a little more, went back up, didn't realize that I didn't get a drink of water. So I went come and landed again, and I actually disconnected that time, got a drink of water, and then I decided to pull out the tandem gear and give a tandem ride to one of my students. So that was the flight. That was the recap. But, but something I thought about later was, you know, should I give myself like a hard altitude to try to restart that motor? Because I caught myself jerking on it kind of low. Is that a, that's what she said? Jerking on it kind of low? I'm always looking for them. It's just a terrible habit. I don't think I'll ever be over that. I think that will be with me forever. Anyway, I was jerking on it hard. I just couldn't get it to fire off. <laughs> There's one. Oh, oh, I'm so terrible. I'm so terrible. What's wrong with me? I should, I should just stop. I shouldn't even make YouTube videos anymore. They're going to be demonetized because of the jokes. That's what's coming. I bet. They'd be like, oh, I'm sorry. We looked into your channel. It's terrible. I probably wouldn't care. I'm just glad you guys are watching. Don't even know where I was going with this. Not even sure what I was saying. It's fun stuff. We'll see. It ended up being a two-miler. I did a two-mile cross-country, one thermal. Climbed it to the top, missed the next one. Just negative connection. But hey, light days, that's what happens sometimes, especially if it's light. The strong days are easy. Like If it's strong, you just, just rape the sky, man. Just, oh, there's something. Up you go. Not today, though. Today was a work. It was a struggle. It was very light, slow, daunting lift. Just sort of loitering around, floating along, not very high, not very far. You know, had I gotten maybe 2,000 feet, I probably would have had enough altitude to connect to that thermal. But because they topped out at 1,400, there was just, if you didn't pick your move exactly right, dirted, baby. Dirted. <laughs> so anyway, it's just like, Late night water with Kyle, rehydration talk. Don't know what else to call it. That's what's going on. Anyway, I hope you liked the video. Thumbs up if you did. If, uh, we'll have some flying video. I'll record some stuff at some point, but the helmet I had on didn't have a camera mount. Oh, that was the other point of this video. The point that I wanted to make was the fact that the helicopter helmet, I can't hear the video, but when I wore the helmet that I was wearing, I don't have a GoPro mount on it, but you can pop the damn ear cups off, pop, pop, and you could hear just like you're free flying. You've got the earmuffs kind of hovering over your ears, and then when you crank it up, you can pop, pop, stick them back on, and it, and it secures over your ears. So I think I may do a whole helmet revamp, like Maybe even retire the old Kylo paramotor helmet, or at least rig up one that I can thermal with, have the motor ear protection, and adjustable ear cups, vlog setup. Yeah, yeah, why not? I think that would be a good option, because I like to hear what's around. Like, if there's airplanes in the vicinity, you know, my hearing is an important sense that I use when I'm free flying, and that's, it could be a safety thing. So in the interest of safety, I think I may redesign or rethink my helmet setup for motor off thermal flying instead of just putting on the motor helmet if i'm just motoring the helicopter helmet's fine but for motor thermal and when i need to open those cups up and look listen smell and feel that's the kind of stuff that i'm thinking so yeah i think that was the real point of the video was to get that on camera that the helmet and then maybe the hard restart altitude like maybe say below 500 feet i don't try anymore because sometimes it's violent and the air is crazy down low it's not organized thermals even on a good day when you're down low oftentimes it's disorganized and turbulent and dangerous and being low is where you get hurt that's where you got no time to react maybe put it in my psyche that like a 500 agl be the hard limit for either you got the motor started or you commit to your freaking landing and like that's the hard deck like i need a hard deck for that and i think that's a good number and I think a lot of it depends on the kind of day it is, too. Today, you know, maybe 200 feet was enough. The thermals weren't strong enough to cause any huge shoots or collapses. But there could have been an anomaly. There could have been just a, a crazy bull out there that was ready to buck. Oh, hand of God kind of stuff. But I didn't think so. Like, the day was sort of muted out by some upper level development. It, it just wasn't the day for it. You got to... Well, hello to you. 
You've got to look at the day. You've got to look at the day and know what the day is bringing. Being able to read the sky is such a useful tool. I, I don't know if I'm good at it or not. Obviously, I dirted out today. Maybe it's something I have some talent at. When it happened, it made me realize that this hasn't happened in a long time. Like all summer long, I've been thermal flying and going where I want, motor or no motor. Or maybe, no, wait, one time I landed out and I restarted on the ground. It's the restart that's the thing. What I may do is rig up an Atom 80 so that the Atom 80 is my thermal flying rig because it's really easy to restart. Like just a pow and it goes off. Like it's way easier than the Moster. And that may be the trick. I may want to utilize Atom 80 as my thermal mobile. I think that's that may be another thing that I do for like thermal days when it's big. You'll be able to have that restart option. Of course, electric start is a thing, but I don't have any electric start stuff. I just use a pull starter. And it works good if I can get on the ground and get some leverage on it, but it's harder to do in the air for me. Sometimes I get lucky, but most of the time it's been off for like an hour or more. You know, sometimes I thermal at least for 30 minutes. Even today was the shortest flight I've had all summer long. And here it is November. I, I flew for 25 minutes, I'm guessing. So yeah. Well, I'm doing rambling, guys. I'm just going on and on about this thing, and I just thought... I would post-flight debrief it as I am three beers deep. This is what you get. I'll probably edit out the oohs and ums and ands. And yeah, I probably already said much love Kyle out, but I mean it this time, guys. Much love, Kyle out.